Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, kings, queens, mighty knights and mages, good evening. How's everybody doing this evening? My name is Manier Sunny, and I'm joined here uh, by the lovely Stupid Shadow, aka Koreaboo. And what we have before us today is a game of League of Legends between the teams of Astora and Glacial Uprising. They're, they're going to be playing for what is a game here in the week, third week of the Prophecy Cup. Glacial Uprising, currently the third-ranked team. Astora is sitting at the top of the standings. This is definitely going to be a good match to watch. Just going through some statistics right now. Astora, as I said, are top of the table. The series record of two wins, one loss, and one tie. They uh, Their overall game record is 3-3. Three and three. <laughs> Glacial Uprising behind them is actually sitting at 1-0 one, zero and, one, zero and 3 with 6 points. So they're just behind them in terms of standings. This so this can potentially shake up the Saints. They have actually a better game record, which is interesting enough. But they have a better game overall record. I'm gonna guess that's because they don't have any. They don't have that loss like Astora does. But Astora is ahead in terms of overall points since they have two wins. And just going down the lineups for these teams real quick. Let me just make going down the lineups for these teams for the side of. Glacial Uprising, we have Death Design in the top lane, Fizzy in the jungle, Shea Vizsla at the mid lane, Steel and Lady Carry and Mail Walrus at support. And then for Astora, we have... Hmm, what's up with these teams? What the heck? They all have different tags. Anyway, as you are, for the side of Astora, we have Miley, we have Ducks Predator in the top lane, Young Narwhal in the jungle, Tweak in the mid lane, Evil's R at AD Carry, and Overhoe the captain at support. And it's going to be a good game, yeah? Ready for this. Haven't got to watch. I don't think this will, I think will be my first game. I've got the cast of Astores this season, so I'm really excited to see Overho. Always been one of the more active members of the community. Really, really like what he's done with this team. And, uh, Really like what he's done. He came, They started as a challenger team, and then they worked their way up, and now we find them sitting at the top of the table. And they're looking at they're looking to take the crown this season. They have like I've, as their game record would suggest, they're really competent. Really, they have a really good drafter for their team. Astora leading their drafts. I said Astora, Overhaul leading their drafts with Ducks Predator also, you know, doing a big part in that. And they're just, I'm really excited. Shadow, you here? Yes, I am here. It's me, Shadow, your second caster for tonight. There he is in the, I would say in the flesh, but you know, no one here can see him. You can only hear his, his lovely, laudacious voice as he talks to us through his new Blue Yeti microphone. Wow. How's that feel, my dude, right there? <laughs> I do not have the flesh. I am Earth Shadow. I am unexisting. We'll be mm -hmm. getting in our game shortly when uh, picking bands. Mm -hmm. So band. we will be moving now. Speak of the devil himself. Looks like we're gonna get into this right here. Pick and ban. Already gonna be the first thing knocked off the table right here. Just getting that out the way. Is that gonna be? thrown right back at Fizzy. Fizzy, that's one of his favorite champions. If you ever get if you're ever in chat when a Zach gets played for either team, Fizzy's one of the first people to jump up and give comments to give some expertise on the pick so it makes sense. Darius at Ducks Predator, who's actually gonna be subbing in for the, uh Sir Camped a lot for this game. Interesting interesting swap. I would like to have see your coach Sir stepping in. I would like to see him. Uh, I heard of his uh, Yasu. I heard legends of how good this Yasu is, and I would really want to see him carrying his team this game. <laughs> <laughs> def I've played against his Yasu on some in-house, and it's definitely not fun. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm just not the best at League of Legends, though, so that might have a part to do with it. Anyway, rest of the pick and bans went through. We had Zed getting knocked away from Shea Vizsla, and then Nautilus being taken off the table from Ducks Predator. And as a result, we're going to see Thresh getting locked in right here for Manwarwell. So securing themselves a support pickup and 
someone who's not the most contested support right now, first pick. Maybe it's just the confidence they have in Man Marlis on the champion. Really interesting. Which in result, by securing this thresh, they're going to give up the Lucian, who is a top tier pick right now, and the Nar over to the side of Astora. The pick so far with the Nar is going to be great for team fights. So they're going to be looking to either split push with the Nar and teleport him in with some great team fights. Um, Against this Callista, if he's able to get on the Callista and she does not have alt up, he Anar is able to d completely destroy this Callista, and that's going to be almost all the damage from uh, Glacial Uprising gone, unless they pick another hyper carry. Stead going to lock the crab in. I think this is actually one of our first picks of Urgot so far in the season. Let me. Take a look over at our stats real quick, but I'm pretty sure this is the first Urgot we've had the pleasure of seeing. And it's going to be busted out by none other than Death Design himself. Everyone knows about Death Design's Urgot. It's, it's a very powerful and intriguing pick, but Death Design is known for this. So it's not going to be a surprise to a lot of uh, our viewers here. But it's still a great, uh, a, myth, a very different pick. With uh, the Orianna being great for those team fights that we talked about before, having that wave clear, which further extends the split pushing power of Nar. Some people in chat were saying uh, that you're still a little bit, you're still a little quiet. It should be a little bit better now, guys. Hopefully. Bear with me. I'm severely sick, so mm -hmm. I have to mute my mic whenever I can. <laughs> yeah. We do not need you dying on uh, stream. We don't want to... I think that might... Although that would help our numbers because we'd probably end up on slash r slash live stream uh, fails. Anyway, anyway, nonetheless, rest of the pick and ban. We had Sejuani taken off the table. Brom followed suit. Ezreal, which taking that away from Fizzy, he's also he's also been one of the people talking about this Ezreal jungle. And then uh Janna, just not a champion. Just it's Janna. Like no one likes playing against that. And then so that's gone. Gragas being secured for young narwhal in the jungle. Nice comfort pick, pretty simple. Easy clearing jungler right there. And then Kane as a result. The Counter Jungle King, the master of early game, going to be picked up by Fizzy. So we're going to have to see what he can do to Young Narwhal in this early game because Kane is somebody that they Kane is somebody that has to get ahead early. He relies on he has the highest base mana level one mana regen base mana regen in the game, but his stat growth is horrible. The only thing he keeps like top ten in is that uh, mana regeneration. So you have to know how to play around the early game, how to when to invade or when to go for these early counter ganks and things like that. Otherwise, you're just going to fall really, really far behind because you don't have any scaling in your kit. What we're seeing from the side of um, of Astora is a lot of team fighting and sticking power in, with the split push of the Nar. So they have two options, split push and team fight. They have a lot of team fighting and split push. While on the other hand, we have Glacial Uprising with very solo-centric uh, champions. Kane doesn't bring anything to his teammates other than CC, but he doesn't bring supportive abilities that uh, empower his teammates. Urgot doesn't do that either. Malzahar, it's all solo carry uh, champions except for the Callista Thresh in the bot lane. They're going to be the powerhouses of the team fights. Other than that, maybe a 1-3-1 one, one split push is what they're looking for. We will be getting into the game quite mm -hmm. soon with yeah. the spectator Wait. delay being here. With the good old N-A-N-A-N-A-N that we all like to see as of this current patch. Uh, yeah, just to clarify some things for those who aren't looking at chat, uh, Astora had some roster it's just, they had a roster situation, so their captain, Ducks Predator, or their coach, 
as you are your coach is subbing in for Sir Camp a lot in the top lanes. And that might explain any confusion as to where our boy was at. Excuse me. Now, so looking at these matchups, have you uh, have you had the pleasure of playing the Nar Ergot matchup yet so far? Um, not often do I see an Ergot. I've played the Orn against Ergot. It's not pretty, but Ergot is a very bully, bully, uh, a bullying champion, mm -hmm. and so is Nar. So they can go either way. They're both ranged. It's like an eighty carry versus an eighty carry. I, I feel. Whoever gets ahead in this is going to be the one that wins the lane. But it's going to be pretty even because the ranges are about the same. And they both have that tanky stat about them. They're both basically the same type of character, as you would say. The uh, So I played Urgot earlier, actually, today. No one look at my match history, please. Please, yeah, no one look at my match history. And I played against a Kennen, who you know is a lot longer range. And from what from what I gathered, like I said, there's only one game. When you can actually get into, I think Urgot's attack range is 350 units, three and a half Teemos. When you can actually get into auto range and, you know, activate his W, he will melt somebody like cheese in a microwave. However, if the champion has longer range or cool tools to kite with, I feel like he has a really rough time making it through the lane. Like, of course, he has a gap closer in the E, but it's very, it's very projected and it's very like slow to wind up, and it's just really easy to get out of the way most of the time. And that's, I feel, it's gonna go with this Nar because Nar, while they both do have short ranges, Nar slightly outranges him, and Nar's range increases throughout the game while Urgot stays pretty much the same. So I feel like Nar won't have too much of a problem being able to throw out that boomerang and uh, with the hyper movement speed increase kiting in and out and then if nar does want it and then when nar goes big i think he'll just out damage ergot in terms of the uh in terms of like face tanking his w damage or things like that the thing though uh that could happen is with the ergot ult being an execute when they're low when this nar is before he's transforming the way he can kill him is a lot of nars will bait uh when their health is low and then kill the person when their health increases so they can bait a person, uh, but the thing against like Garen's, Darius's, and Urgot's is they can kill you before you bait them, and they can just completely shut down anything you try to do. We will be getting into our game quite soon. Yeah, guys, so we're finally going to be hopping into this loading screen as Shadow. He's going to be switching over. Some people are already saying Astor is going to win based off a of comp alone. Some bold claims coming in right here. Honestly, I think the skin, the skin synergy is what's going to do it for them. Dark Star, Star Guardian, Project, all these futury looking skins. And then we have the clap, the like sci-fi skins, and then we have the classic Dino Nar. Does Fizzy happen to have a skin? Is he, he still, he hasn't connected for me. Ah, uh, I see. That is the same for me. Everyone's at 0% for me also. Oh, there we go. That's, yeah. I should put a uh, league on my SSD and this will be quality. Oh, yes. When you putting league on your SSD is like one of the best decisions you can make besides using condoms when you have some, using condoms. Make sure you do that, kids. Shout out to, uh, Shout out right there. Make sure you do that. I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have two options. Leave that in there. I have two yeah, options. We do have a younger audience. Okay, but there's two options that are better than that. That uh, one pulling out, and two. This is the one I like to use. Never seeing a girl in your life. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can't pull out the eight. You can't pull away. Pull out. Can you guys eight. switch the scene? Uh, the scene is switched. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, just the loud jumping in. Wait, no, it's still... On stream, it's still showing, uh, what's it called? It's still not working. Yeah, on stream, it, he is correct. It's still showing us as... What is this thing called? It's still showing us the old, the loading screen. Before game. 
Let me give a little check on that. This is our first time using this setup, so bear with us, guys. There's some technical mm -hmm. difficulties. While he gets that, I'm going to do my best. To, I want you all to pick up your wow. easels and your paint brushes and sit down and just paint a mental picture because I'm going to give you an audible experience of legal. Oh, yeah, I was on studio mode. Sorry, guys. I'm actually the dumb. And here we go. As, oh, can they see now? Yeah, I was actually Darn. really dumb. Anyway, as we all get into this game of League of Legends, I want you all to close your eyes. First of all, welcome to the Quiet Rift. I'm your host, Manny or Sunny, the play-by-play -play caster for tonight, and I'm joined by Korea Boo, my color caster. And on this rift, we're going to have Astora and Glacial Uprising clashing into one another. As we watch, we see Astora making their way to the top lane Tribrush in a five-man formation. This may be for safety, this may be to look for blood. The Nar is going to be leading the way right here, just looking to catch some people out. We do have a lot of people for the blue team in the river as well, so we need to watch for this. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, we, st we do have a guard. We have a defensive setup coming in. We have the support and mid laner watching the uh, red buff. Meanwhile... <laughs> what is that? I'm going to stop. <laughs> a ASMR, okay, Manny. Oh, my. Anyway, so, yeah, the game's going on. We have our boys. We had just kind of weird. They decide to put the mid laner in the support. I feel like, if anything, you'd want the Thresh to go with Kalista since, she, you know, she bound to him. Me just a little saying, Fizzy. Oh, God. Wait, who Check did the she... bush. What did she... Oh, she put it on Thresh, but Thresh didn't go with her to like watch with Kane. Hold uh, up, Fizzy, weird. you can't do this. No, wait a minute, they have the numbers advantage. Or is this just gonna be a level one 3v3? Hold up, get, get ready I for this, folks. Think they don't know Fizzy is there yet. I think you may be a little ahead of me. Yet. What time are you on? I'm at 152. Okay, we're at the same time. Oh, here we go. Fizzy still has a reveal of some. Greg is getting real low oh. right here. And he's gonna get ignited. Fizzy's gonna swoop in and steal the experience. He's gonna flash away. Greg is staying barely alive. Now Death Divine finds himself on the wrong side. He's gonna go down to Oriana, and this ends up not going the greatest for them. First blood, Oriana getting that nice 400 gold into her pocket, and then Urgot losing out on both of his summoners. Feels bad, man. Doesn't get the kill. That's really gonna help the matchup of the Nar, and it's gonna put that even matchup into now a more one sided with a slight advantage. Oh, a great hook in the bot lane. Real nice right there. Pulling in, gets some early damage down. Callista and Thresh ab abusing this level two. Something you definitely need to do when you have a dominant pairing like these two compared to Lulu Lucian. Like, Lulu Lucian isn't bad. <laughs> Just Callista Thresh is a tad bit better. Yeah, it's a, it's a powerhouse of a combo. It's one of those real, like, nasty lanes. Kind of like Draven and, uh, Draven and anyone. <laughs> Yeah, Draven Soroka. Uh, what fun. Or Draven Java. Honestly, Draven Soroka actually is really annoying because Draven just never dies. Oh, have you played that J Draven Leona? That is a great combo that a team should try. I haven't seen much of Leona. She's one of those dive sports. I, yeah, she... Leona's just too dive heavy. Like, Leona kind of, like, Leona, once she commits, she's committed. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about Leona going back. And I think that's her problem. Meanwhile, on the mid lanes, thinking about going in, we have Gragas coming in, throwing that W smack. Barrel on to Shade Bizzler. Gonna get him real slow. He's gonna have to find his way out here. Busy coming over the wall. I don't know if he'll be able to get out in time. Gonna throw the uh, Q down, get, make Tweak back Ooh. off. And she's still going forward. Shade's gonna flash over the wall. Perfect timing to cancel the auto. And then Young Narwhal is gonna body slam into plants, or excuse me, pets. And that's gonna result in both mid laners being at flashing red health. But Oriana's just gonna stay here safely because she knows her jungler has her back. Also, she still has her flash. We don't know where that flash went for the Gragas, but he he still had it. That could have been an easy Gra kill. Mm -mm, Gra Gragas used his flash in the level one at the Raptor camp. Was it needed? I say it was honestly, because he was inside the Urgot W, I believe. Ah, uh, makes sense. Hold on, I'm. I can rewind back to it and check for this. All right. Well. As you can see here, this Gragas is holding the lane, some good play. He's gonna get his red soon. 
Okay, yeah, he had the flash away because got flashed after them and he would have died otherwise. Okay. I just went back. I'm now back at 438, 439. Yep. 440. Okay, we're good. He has the wrong tag for our story. Yeah, they all their tags are kind of all over the place for our story right now. Astora is the need... red team, or correct the team that doesn't have their tags in synergy. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Did uh, something on the stream? You have Glacial Uprising on the. You have their name on the left side, but you have it in red letters. And Lulu's name might be in red letters because she might be going down right here, getting pulled in, taking a lot of damage. Callista gonna uh, take that damage right back. So support for AD carry helpful. But yeah, you have you might want to swap the color palettes for the uh, text. Yeah, I'll do that. Appreciate that. I didn't set up before. We might have some colorblind here. summoners watching. Don't <laughs> want them getting confused. I didn't fix that to start because I was dying of sickness. Sorry, people. You guys have Robotussin cannon. Sorry? Robotussin. Don't know what that is. Okay. It's like... It's like the ultimate cough medicine. I'm like, I know. deathly allergic to most medicines, so... Fun for me. Do you see that visual bug with the pink wards? Good job, Ryan. Anyways, <laughs> Ryan endorse game, let's go. Uh, I understand. We'll be seeing that the vision is spotted out. You're gonna get called out. Hopefully you're gonna get killed off real quick. Urgot walking over a ward on his way to it though. They actually have pretty decent ward coverage on this top side for keeping Gnar safe. Because they have something in the river. They have something to watch the bottom entrance. And then he has one in the river bush. So Gnar's in a pretty safe spot in terms of getting ganked. Looking down at the bottom side, we see Kane actually doing the dragon right now. And he should he should be able to get it, honestly. Gragas doesn't have any idea. He's on the top side coming in. Looks like he's going to prioritize the, our uh, the Gromp. Maybe looking to set up this dive. Um, this dive, I don't think it might work. He, he's a little too high of health. And Urgot yeah. is really tanky with that shield and his pull being a great CC to stop any ganks. So yeah, this Gragas, I believe, he should be near the bottom side. To kill off this Kalissa is really low. If he's able to shut down this bottom lane, I think... That they can really snowball this game. Because a Lulu and a Lucian that is extremely fed will be able to fully dominate the bottom lane and will be oh. able to fully dominate the mid lane, uh, mid game. We're seeing... One thing I want to take note of is the CS lead we see for Nari. You talked about it earlier, but just like. How is this going to continue to play out? Is there a point where Urgot can, you know, look to try and regain lane dominance? Because he's hurting right now. Um, at this point, you see this CS lead and this complete domination from the Nar against the Urgot. Look at the items. Got a 600 gold difference. Yeah, look, look at the items. Nar still has his basic item. Urgot Wait, he has, has Bob. What happens when Nar backs? He's going to be so much stronger than this... Urgot that in no point in the game, unless somehow he gets some crazy ganks for him, this Nar's gonna just dominate him. This is gonna help the split push, this is gonna help the team fight, this is gonna help the 1-4, and will actually help um, Astora win this game. Yeah, yeah, cause you know, normally I'd recommend you always going back, you know, you don't ever want to, like unless you're saving up for something like an NLR, generally you want to be going back and utilizing your gold, cause your gold lead doesn't matter if it's all in your pocket, of course, but at this point, Nars still sitting like comfortably in lane. It's not like he's you know at a deficit because Urgot doesn't have Urgot has a long sword, boots, and a corrupting potion. So Nar can sit in his basic items as well, but he's still a whole 600 gold ahead. So when Nar goes back with the 21, 26 that he has in his pocket, like he said, it's gonna be nasty, and he's gonna continue to dominate this lane. He honestly, I'd want to see him look to utilize this i want to see him walk back to lane and then utilize this tp to go down to the bottom side or even just walk down to malzahar because malzahar is immobile as heck in the mid lane oh hold up Argot gonna go real aggressive right here now gonna throw him into the tower continue to put down the damage gonna drop the ignite doing his best to get the kill not gonna do anything other than just scare the nar back and it was a good attempt gets him a little bit of breathing room but he'll live another day oh my god this and now hold up rag is catching the crab got 
gonna get the flash out. Now we're gonna be bouncing forward now. We're gonna throw the boomerang. He needs to be careful not to go down. He's gonna get flipped. We're gonna, gonna pop the W. Gragas with the body slam in the barrel. He's gonna do his best to get his keep his top laner alive, and it might work right here. Gragas with the body slam finishing off. Young Narwhal, great job right there. Uh, Dutch Predator, you did, shouldn't have went back in there. Oh. That was way too close. Oh my god, Fizzy, that's disgusting. Flashing in right there. Slash, what is that? Scythe strike or like slashing strike? Enemy dash. Reaping slash, okay. Um, Blades the, reach shadow step. You, you, uh, if you noticed, the Urgot ult whiffed by that Gnar. If it had landed, that Gnar would have... Uh, the Narda would have went over to the Urgot. Going over to the Kane doesn't matter that much. Mm. Oh my god, that is a good hook for me. <laughs> Question, what happens if Urgot's ulti, you know, the person is below 25%, but Urgot's dead, will they live? Uh, yes. If you kill the Urgot, that is the only way to save the person. Okay. It won't, like, drag it into his dead carcass? No, it will not. Um, it bad, man. Uh, the... Is he sitting on this? Gonna look to pick himself up another camp. The mid lane his. on the Stora is also a CS lead and a kill lead. Mm -hmm. We notice that the teleports on the side of the Stora is on the top lane, and on the side of Glacial Uprising is on the mid lane. The mid lane isn't that; uh, it doesn't matter as much because they can just walk down or walk up. But the top lane is a big thing because Nara is able to split push. He is able to teleport to team fights, which they already have a strength in. Urgot won't be able to follow. They're going to be needing to send that Malzahar 1v1 against Nara in the late game or in the mid game. Which means the Malzahar is not able to ult a Lucian in a fight, a uh, Orianna in a fight. He'll be stuck. Unless he has to. Uh, the bring the Malzahar into team fights, but lose that TP split push power. Mm -hmm. I feel taking no teleport on the Urgot, although it helps with the pressure in the lane with the Ignite. If you mm -hmm. lose that lane, now you don't have teleport. Yeah, and it's gonna really hurt his team. I suppose Shay taking TP. Honestly, Malzar should be the one taking Ignite. Just gives him so much more kill pressure. And we're gonna have this fight getting breaking out right here. Manuel's gonna get knocked in. We get pulled away. Steel with the clutch ulti, keeping his support alive. His shadow, his shadow isle kin, and they're gonna get out of that pretty cleanly, actually. I do say. All right. Uh, quick question: How do you open the and close the scoreboard with a hockey? Was how do you open and close the scoreboard with hockey? A uh, hockey. Uh, you can hit O, and then U will take away the time, like the time things. Urgot getting it thrown into the wall right here. Gonna take a lot of damage from Nar with the house getting thrown at him. Sorry about half health. Gonna take another one. Urgot gonna try and go forward, but it doesn't matter. Urgot going forward because now Kane's made his way up here, and he's gonna put his mark on the Ducks better. Gonna flash the master emote just to show how much better at this game he is. And it looks like Ducks is going to make it out alive, although he's up here by himself 100% because we have people converging down to the bottom side. Oriana making some movement. Gragas already down there. Alright, we can see this Void, um, Rift, Rift Herald is, uh, being taken on the side of Glacial Uprising. This will help them, uh, mm -hmm. stall that mid game from Astora. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, they, they, de especially in something like this with how much their, te their team, the rest of the team is gonna fall off besides the Callista. Like you said, she's their only late game damage, so they really need to try and look for something here at around, like, the, the 15, 20 minute mark is when they need to try and bust it open. Although letting things like Ocean Dragon go away aren't, you know, the, aren't the play, but uh, Ocean Ocean for Rift is a fair trade. Don't die. The Ocean Don't Drake die. is not big of, uh, not much of uh, a big deal, but it's still something, and it helps with the Nar in his split push because he's able to heal up, and it's gonna help that uh, Lucian, who I assume isn't going to be building lifesteal anytime soon. 
See, I don't know. Ocean Dragon, how you said, Ocean Dragon one, Ocean Dragon, I disagree. I feel like any, once, if you get a double Ocean Dragon, because that's our next dragon that's going to spawn, it's just insane in the membrane, especially for someone like an Orianna or like a Lucian. They just won't die once in extended sieges. I would agree that Wind Drake and Ocean Drake, while doubled up, or insane. Oh, Lucian gonna get pulled in right here. The hook gonna miss. They're gonna go into him. Lane in the slow. Gonna throw him. They're gonna miss almost all the CC. But you know, damage and death are slightly better forms of CC than any miss stuns or hooks. We see that the teleport from both uh, Nar and Melzahar were used. So for the next few minutes, they will not be able to make any plays. This will allow the Urgot to have actually more power in the situation, especially with this Rift Herald coming out, he's able to get that top tower. Here we go. She's gonna slam her head in and four man strong. They're gonna grab the first tower. Oriana, you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time, baby girl. Because you're gonna die. You're gonna get Dremendo. I don't think it's gonna matter. Kane going forward. Oh, he's gonna get exhausted. He might be the first person, first person to go down in this little skirmish. Now we're gonna have our boy Nar in a fight to the death with the Callista. Gonna get kited real hard. He's gonna get a solo double kill for the Nar. Two for one trade. And a tower as well was involved in all of that. A tower and maybe two. Sir God is. Possibly or got gunning away on that top tower. With his tickle damage, but he will get there. Slowly but surely. Missing, Missing pings. pings. Missing pings Oriana's going on making the side. Way up there. I think he'll get us like a third. Oh, hold up. He might actually be able to kill it. Nope. No, never mind. His wave died. Feels bad, man. It's still pretty decent damage. Got about half health onto it. Yeah, that, that play from Nar was really clean. Getting that double kill. Yeah, that was pretty good. Really uh, helpful. We can see in chat someone mentioned a Cloud Drake is better than Ocean Drake. What is your opinion on that? I believe it is because in a team game, rotating is way better than just regenerating health. Okay. In solo queue, not in not a chance in hell. But in organized, we oh Lulu gonna get hooked in right here, and Calista gonna get jumped forward. Lulu all alone in a combat zone, getting left by a lady carry. And that's a great hook from Manral with perfect timing. Caught her in like the last possible uh, non invulnerability frame of your recall animation. What? Wow, that's. It's gotta be good. Ooh, okay. But yeah. It's gonna happen. Fizzy gonna come in right here. Shave the drop the ulti in Orianna. They're gonna put so much damage down. Gonna kill her before her ult even goes through and it even matters. Now they have the numbers advantage three for two. Shave is again and knocked in. Gonna pull in the Gnar. Hit the play as well. And Gnar, you're way too squishy in your dino costume. To handle this, gonna get taken low. Oh, gonna have to get the my. heal. It looks like to live. Oh yeah. no, he went. He went mega. Is he now gonna come in looking for another fight? Gonna actually have the defensive Naruto. He's trying to keep his team alive. And now, as they go forward, Red Turret's gonna get destroyed on the top side. Oh, and we're my. also gonna lose Kane. Four man knock up. That's a huge thing. The question is, what can they do with it? Callista's just kiting back. Doesn't like she wants to fight. They're gonna pull in the Nar again. He's He's fatigued, he can't get big, but they need to make a decision. I think they're going to make the decision to back off. Oh, we can see the all coming in. Oh, great! Oh my god, yes! Yes! <laughs> it's beautiful right there. See, Glacial Uprising is called the Comeback Team. The Gods of Comeback. And it's not a meme for a reason. It's a meme for a reason, I mean. Look at this comeback. They were able to catch out across the map the uh, in the bot lane. They were able to use a thresh hook to catch out a player. In the mid lane, they were able to catch out the Orianna with the Malzahar ult, with the Gregus fail, fail flashing and not able to save her. And then they were able to catch out the... Was it the Lulu with the Yergot ult? Yeah. They just catch out people all around the map. I think he, he got Gnar with that. And I actually, so, I want to oh, bring yet. something up about Gnar. Nar has fallen behind in farm. This is not something that should have happened. Nar was up about 20, 30 CS. Now he finds himself down 10 to the Urgot. Now they're going to unleash on Orianna, pull her back into the team with that displacement. And she's going to try and ult throw them around, but Lulu's going to have to pay the price for her. Death Design getting the kill. Shout out right there. Double kill for the Urgot. And now he finds himself as the man top laner. 3, 2, and 1. Looks like he found his footing with all eight of his feet. That is it's just a lot of picks 
and Glacial Rising working as a team to take out every member of Astora one by one. Astora really mm -hmm. needs to group. They have the team fight. They have the team to team fight. They have the gold. They have the advantage. They're losing a little bit of their advantage after every one of these skirmishes. You talked about the farm. It is now equal. They have the advantages. They can they can fight them. They're just not grouping. They need to group and be able to take out Glacial. They have the power to do this. Yeah, they're letting this pick catch composition really shine and do what it's best at. They're they're catching you know Lulu. They're catching Lulus or Nars oh, mini Nars over the wall with fresh hooks. And then they just dump everything, remove one person, and then they just go forward from there. And it's worked out so far so good. Might have to see how it works out here. This might be the team fight opportunity that Astor was looking for. They're going to just back off. Urgot on the flank. Catching them in the small choke. And now they're going to go forward here looking for the team fight. Oriana gets the ult on the both carry. That's pretty big. On the other, we have a fight taking place on two fronts. World War II style. Death Design going to get the kill on the Lulu right here. Now this fight, they're down a man. They're doing their best. Going to get thrown in right here. Going to knock out the loose. He's going to do his best to get out of here. Going to get pulled in and grinded to death. And that's going to be the carry, AD carry down. One, two, three. They're going to fall. Four people down, only the Oriana, and that's a clean four for zero for the side of Glacial Uprising. They're going to look to go with this minion wave and push this out. The whole fight, Nar was not in Mega. That was not an ideal fight for them. If Nar was in Mega, I could see that fight changing. Look at all the squishies they have, especially, mm -hmm. except for Urgot. If he were to five men ulti them into all, they would be able to just completely wiped they would have the eviscerated that fight and that would have brought this game back to even but now they're going to be losing a bottom inner tower um real quick on team fights hit the a button that switches to the team fight camera mode ah Thank where you. it gets rid of everything except a small bar at the bottom that shows like team health and then uh who's dead in their summoners it's really helpful thank you thank you that's good to know mm -hmm. All right, we can see the Water Drake was actually picked up by uh, Glacial, so now the healing will be equal. Busy, using that chill and smite, just establishing some dominance. Hold up, are those Star Guardian Wards? Are those love letters? Love letters? They look like some. They look like something from like a middle school you'd send your secret admirer, like dropping the flaps of her locker. For me, I'm getting a pink box. So it's bugged for me. No, it looks like a pink box for me that like bounces up and down. I didn't know if that. Would, I did. I don't know if that's a bug, a visual bug, or if it's supposed I'm to. I'm pretty sure it's a visual bug. Oh, okay. Oh, it looks like a, like a pink envelope. Nar, what are you doing, buddy? You're bouncing around. This isn't a. This isn't a bounce beat. You're gonna get really low. Actually, I had the flash out of that, so that's gonna be big to look at for the next fight. No flash. Uh, no I'm flash. Nar. Mega Nar ulti. They could be looking towards going to Baron because of Nar at base and not no flash. He's pretty much useless during that time period. They're looking towards not going for the Baron, but it was an option at the time, able to rush it. Yeah. Especially with the Kalista, you can time it with your jungler so that you will guarantee a smite for you. Because a Kalista, ooh. Lulu gonna get hooked in right here, and there's gonna be a dead supporter. This is what I'm talking about right here. The Classic comp. execution of a pick comp. Land the hook, drop the the Mal's ulti, and then you just you take Baron. See the Callista. I guess gonna do his best for his team right here over the wall and get real <laughs> antsy for this. Gonna drink from the barrel. Sad about four thousand. Gonna throw something over for some vision. Get an idea. Meanwhile, we have Urgot on the back line putting some pain down onto this carry. He's just here to zone. His team's got the Baron, and now they've got the Gragas. And now Urgot's gonna die, pay for the sins, but it doesn't matter. His team just took the Baron, and they got the kill on the Gragas. So they're look, they're riding mighty high on the horse. They were so split up. Not a, only one ult was used on the side of Astora. I'd like to see a lot more. Glacial Uprising is guaranteed to get the smite, like almost guaranteed, because the Callista will do more damage than any smite can ever do, just yes. with her red. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I don't really think it was the best idea to try and contest that. Very hard to outsmite the Callista. A Callista. A team with a Callista, excuse me. And oh. now, after them getting that Baron... Lulu! That was, it, I clenched right there with that. Like. It seems they're not learning from their mistakes. I don't see 
I don't see Astora winning this unless they fix the problem of not getting caught. I mean, they, they might get caught again. Nar gonna get altered right here. They might get caught into a team fight. That's not the best for them. Although we're gonna have one person going down from the red side, Kane, but it doesn't matter because. But he's already lost his jungler. Lucian is going to get hooked in again. Or not, excuse me, not again. going to get hooked in again. A good hook from the Thresh. Double kill for the Malzahar. And now Overhose retreating as he gets slowed. Ace coming in for steel. And now, this this could be game. That whole fight, Urgot was bottom. It was a 4v5. Wow. It's just the pick comp is working. It... They take out one of their teammates and it's a 4v4. They use their other pick, it's a 4v3. They're using their pick comp to full ability. While on the side of Astora, they're not using their comp. Their split push or their team fight. They're just losing their pieces. And each piece of a team fight comp is so important. Losing a player on a pick comp isn't that bad. Losing one on a team fight comp where you need every single one of the pieces to make the puzzle is detrimental to, to your cause. 11k goal differential at just coming up on 26 minutes. This is really grim for the side. <clears throat> Looking really grim for the side of that story right now. Both TPs being up, but being more useful on the side of uh, Glacial. Since an inhib is down, they could be looking mm -hmm. for a base race or a back door from the Malzahar. Being mages are able to put down a lot of damage to towers with whatever reason why they get an AP damage to towers. Well, Malzahar, Malzahar in particular because he has his void links, which scale, you know, they scale with AP. Yes, that also. The Malzahar not having the Lich Bane, so <laughs> that's not working in his favor for that. One thing I want to bring up though, you talk about TPs. Duck's Predator, if they want to win this, he has to know how to utilize this this in the split push perk. And in that side lane, because Malzahar, for the most part, is going to group with the team. His TP is just kind of to make his team feel good, so they can't say they didn't take any TP. But Nars is crucial in terms of split pushing, or just starting off fights like he does right here with that Mega Nar. Gonna, they might turn it around on the pit comp, knocking two people in. Death Design still getting a kill, and he's still staying healthy right here. Gonna lose his mid laner. But he's actually gonna turn this around, get the kill on the NAR, and someone else as well. This is gonna be And game. he's just rampaging, double kill. Drag is retreating, and he's caught between a rock and a hard place. They honestly don't even care about him. They're just gonna get this Nexus. An amazing 2v4. They were, or 2v5. They were able to win that fight after all alts being used, except for Lucian. Which it doesn't matter too much, because that is a wave clear ability. And it doesn't do much as much damage as his normal abilities. That will be the game. Just like that, Murder She Wrote. 2738 is going to be our game time. Uh, 54.1k, 40.6, 10 towers to 0, 23 to 8 final kills, 4 1 and 14 out of the Malzahar. Absolutely. Phenomenal. 2 0 15 from the Thresh, matter of fact. Hold up, wait a minute. 2 0 15. That's insane. His hooks this, this game were pretty, pretty good, though, to be honest. The hooks were have... insane. Loot overhaul, man. It just felt like he was a hook magnet this game. 0 6 and 5. Thresh got so many great picks on him that would take that Lulu ulti out of the fights. Meaning they couldn't, they couldn't, you know, try and use it to help Lucian kite back and stay alive, and it just made for a much easier, uh, just made it much easier. Because think about it like this: your one counter to a, a counter to something like you know a pit comp is to have some sort of like bursty, you know, healing or shielding. Lulu yes. ulti. If you keep getting the picks onto Lulu, you can't do then that. You lose that. That you is know. the reason why you take out a Soroka instead of taking out her carries to take out their healing and their uh their shield uh, not shields but a jana would be on the shield side of that you always take out the support before you take out the damage because then the damage has nothing yeah okay we'll be moving Special. on to our next game soon unfortunately yeah and once again phenomenal just great game from the side of uh, glacial uprising neo to 
they were down a little bit early, but they really quickly start realized how to, they, that they needed to start playing to their wing condition. And they did, once they adjusted for that, it was smooth sailing for them. As I miss another boat on Battleship. All right, so that, that game, who do you think was the MVP of that game? Thresh, 100%. Thresh, okay. So we saw in the mid lane, it was losing. In the top lane, it was losing for on the side of Glacial. The jungler was... Uh, it was... Not Gregus, it was... I'm blanking out here. I'm blanking out. Uh, Kane. He wasn't putting much pressure, uh, I believe, early. And rightfully so, he wasn't able to. His champion does not allow. In the bottom lane, it, they were doing really well. You are. And I believe it was a team effort in, in the bottom lane for both of them because it is a very, like, connection, like a Rakan, uh Zaya type of thing. But the Thresh Hooks did pull it through. Those clutch Thresh Hooks were the reason that they were able to get a lot of the picks and turn the game around. The Malzahar also getting a lot of picks with his ult. So I'm a, it's a toss-up for me between the Thresh and the Malzahar because a lot of picks happen between both of them. I'm going to have to like a, flip a coin on this one. <laughs> Not literally, but uh, I'll think about it. I made my business. So going into the second game, what does Astora need to do if they want to tie this series at 1-1 to and not take a 2-0 L? They need if they lose 2-0, Glacial Uprising will be in control of first place. They need to play their comp and not let the enemy team uh, play theirs. They had the comp. They didn't play their comp, and they let the enemy play theirs. They gave the enemy control when you had control. They had control. They should have pressured them, took in control, uh, grouped up. They allowed them to pick. They, they kept on solo laning for some reason. When, obviously, on the solo lane, it was on the advantage for Glacial. I picked my cha uh, my MVP. It was Thresh for me. I went, I, I went through and looked. That was some great work from him. Then we hop into the second game and we hop down to Spectate. And they're going to have the size getting swapped. Glacial Uprising now will be the red team. Astor will be the blue team for the second game. And ask them if we can get like two minutes. I'm going to go put some laundry in so that way I'm not a dirty, dirty boy tomorrow at work. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> so we'll just continue waiting. We'll take some questions from the chat if you guys want to ask some questions or some comments that you want to bring out there. Uh, tag it with hashtag um, hashtag QT. Can we get some predictions in the chat? Predictions in the chat. What does everyone, uh, what does everyone think is uh, going to be the team that wins next? winning no one person saying that if everyone else didn't know apparently there was some bets going around on uh, if someone too old we can see that that's not happening um, 
since the side of Astora would need to 2 0 for that to happen. <laughs> okay, the pick and ban phase is in. We'll see what happens. A ban of Zach and Ari. And then the Malzahar, they were. If you see that um, Team Astora is scared of that Malzahar. That was a great pick uh, pick from Glacial to get all those picks for the pick comp. It was a key factor. I wouldn't be surprised if they banned Thresh also. A band of Zed going out. That's going to be a target ban, I believe. Ban. Ban on Darius. We'll be seeing the Thresh and the Braum picked. Uh, the Thresh being great for the pick comp, but the... This time it's going to be on Astoria. So maybe they'll be trying to run the exact same comp as... Um, Glacial with the picks and just the comeback nature of it. The Braum and the Lucian being picked on the side of Glacial. Great duo with the passive synergy. And the Kane being picked up on the side of Astora now. Looking like they want to get all the parts of Glacial they can with the Nar being picked again. Great pick early. He was doing well. Just utilizing all that TP more and we can see it. Urgot. Once again, that matchup, we can see how it goes. It's equal. Um, whoever goes ahead early wins. But it's not game over for that. Late game, Urgot becomes a powerhouse. Rivals Nar in the team fights. You'll be seeing an Oria ban Oriana ban. I guess they believe the Oriana was a great pick from Astora which she is with the team fighting potential seems more targeted from last game the jungle Ezreal getting banned hello hello Been greetings my apologies I see they went they started up the pick and ban phase and Thresh still the first pick, although this time it's going to be Overho rocking it. Mammal is getting his hands on the Braum this time, not being banned. Steel going to get to play with Lucian, fun champion. I'm actually really surprised the name Steel, just spelt out plainly, was available. Steel? Yeah. I think that L is a little different. Is that L a capital I? Maybe. It, it may be. Oh, the ram is being picked. That's insane for a full AD comp. So if they do not have any strong AP characters on the side of um, Astora, then this could be a massive pick, especially with the Urgot being a really late game pick. Azir? Well, Azir, strong AP pick. They, they might have heard you. But the, the, the early game is Jar really weak. They have to lock in like, yeah, like an Azir or Cassiopeia. Tristana, a great pick. Able to do that AP damage that we were looking for a little bit, but he able to do it. Echo is not one of those characters that you would normally see being the AP mage. He's an assassin, so he's only going to do a little bit of burst of damage, which isn't going to help against a Ramus. Echo's not going to be able to ult if he's taunted by that Ramus. That is a pick that's going to really be bad for him. We're seeing no AP on the side of Glacial, except for... The Braum passive and the Ramus, which is pretty negligible. So low AP damage on both sides, except for small things like Nars W, Thresh, Tristana, and Echo being yeah. an assassin, but doing minimal damage to tanks. Yeah, both these teams, both of their tanks are going to be really armor stacking. Nar's going to, you know, opt to get himself a Thorn Mail, Randuin's, Dead Man's, things of that nature. Meanwhile, this Ramus 
this Ramis. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he had his hand like in his pants for half of this game. <laughs> All Ramus players. I, I versed the Ramus recently. It is not fun. It, the taunt is insanely long, especially against two assassins, Echo, Kane, or maybe even Nar when he's in the small form. That's going to be not fun. Not fun for the side of uh, Stora. Very weak comp, being stronger on the side of Glacial. So they have the weak comp this time. And they weren't able to play their strong comp with their advantage from last time. This game is already in the advantage of Glacial. The game's not over yet. They still have a chance. But this could be a great 2-0, bringing Glacial to the top of the leaderboards. If they're able to 2-0 them here, then we might see a new best team. Mm-hmm. is gonna be interesting people are people are uh, not happy about the all ad team in champ select from the sounds of it honestly i'm not the happiest camper over it either like even though the enemy team doesn't have like even though your team just has a lot of overpowering damage in the early and the mid game before nar can get tanky it just seems like if they don't close out this game it gets to like the super late game Actually, I don't know because Nar's tanky. No, he's not no. tanky enough that it matters. If, I feel like actually Shock Blast will still melt through him now that I think about it. There's no real tanks on the side of uh, Stora. Nar's not really tanky late game because he'll be building damage, and if he's not in Mega Nar, he'll just get melted. Even in Mega Nar, he's just so slow and has no like real tank abilities like armor up or a shield. He's gonna be easy to kill. Mm -hmm. The late game, yeah. Glacial, sh they need to win before Glacial gets the late game. Because if it gets the late game, Glacial wins. Unless oh, there's hundred percent, hundred percent. Unless somehow they mess up, at, like at Baron or whatever. But their team comp is a winning team comp for late game. Even in mid game, they're extremely strong. Definitely, definitely. New, new best team is never going to be the best. What do you mean? You can be the best like no one ever was, Balmain. Balmains. You can't say that anyone can be the best. They just have to put their heart to it. Preach that. Preach that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, your last name can just be Faker. Is his last name actually Faker? Who? Faker's last name? I'm pretty sure his last name isn't actually Faker. His middle, first, and last name are all Faker. What do you mean? Oh my, I have to check the birth records then. I've been looking at it Lee all Lee Sang Shuk. If, if anyone's Korean and I just like butchered that, please let me know. Lee Sang Hyuk. Yeah, you definitely butchered it. And now, don't forget to transition the scenes again. Don't make the studio mode mistake, because we're now getting yeah. into loading screen for this game. We're in, we're in for this one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Don't get too old. Too old. <laughs> Glacial Uprising coming at us with a, diff a very different style of composition from the last game, though, to say the least. Like This comp is yeah. nothing like the last one in any way. This this one I don't see a strategy to it. Um, it's some it crazy kind of, crazy comp. It seems like everybody just kind of was like everyone just kind of picked comfort picks and they're just like, there's no there's no like synergy here is the thing right like. Not really. There's not that much synergy from what I'm. There's seeing. There's not really a strong team fight. Okay, that's you you don't. Okay, so this is the, generally the way it goes, right? You look at a team. You're like, what do they do? This team, they're a pit. They uh, go for poke. You know, they try to poke you down and then super fast twist towers. That's what the Jace would let you believe, right? Right. And then you look at the Braum. Braum makes you think like a team wants to team fight or a team wants to, you know, siege or something. Well, the Braum makes you think a team wants to team fight. Well, Jace isn't, you know, the world's most renowned team fighter. He's known for his poke. Then you look at this crab guy. And I, I honestly don't know what Urgot does anymore. 
he like he skirmishes off in the side lane. He's right? a crazy tank that is actually pretty good in team fights now. Okay. Um, so I'm have, gonna be hey, stepping away. You have a team away. fighter. You have a poker. You have like a skirmisher. You have so many things, and none of it really goes together. Like you put your eggs in too many various baskets. Yeah, it, it's just a mixed mixed team comp with no real direction. I, I think it might be the comfort picks, or they said. Well, whatever. Let's uh, let's just do whatever we want. Maybe they're trying to do a surprise tactic, which Glacier was not prepared for. But I think even the comp, even if it's not prepared, it still could win pretty Hold easily. Up. Hold up, everyone! Now we watch them walk into the dangerous jungle. The tribushes will be their route up. A five-man stack, busy venturing out, being the bait as he does his dance. The blue team's gonna come from behind. My team moving. And please, please walk back. Please walk back. Please walk back. Please walk back. I want it. I want the blood. I want blood. No. <laughs> no. The side of uh, Glacial has that really good early game, as with um, Astora for the level one fights. So it's a really, it's a toss up of who would win it. It's more about positioning and mechanics there. I wanted that level one fight so bad. <laughs> Just this like is actually time. something I. So level one fights are one of the most interesting things to me in League of Legends because, like, in, in certain champions, you want to see what they what they want to take level one. Like, does Urgot take the E level one and attempt that they can pick somebody off, or does he take the W for the higher DPS? Braum's team is already at an advantage because of the passive, and then like Lucian taking the Q. What does Jace take? Does he take his W or his Q? Or his Q? You think? His Thresh. Does Q. he take his E? His Q? If you take the W on Jace, you're not gonna have much damage because you you have the speed gate. You're right, because I forgot it's based off your total AD. Trist like Tristana, which Tristana want to take the rocket jump, or would she want to take the E? Would she want to take the Q? All of I feel like are viable options for her, depending uh, on how the invade goes. You would have to take the E because um. Just the burst damage and the wave clear you get early. Because the early game, you got, you're wanting to get that level 2 real fast and push your advantage in the bottom lane. I don't know. Honestly, this is just me. Actually, I'm trying to... No, because you're already at it. Actually, their team's already at a disadvantage. And that disadvantage might not matter right here as this level 2 fight gets taken up right here. Lucian getting taken real low right here, and he's going to be within an auto of his death. Going to have to definitely pop his heal, but now... You're in a minion wave, my boy, Thresh. You're going to take a lot of retaliation, but you should be healthy. Decimating Strike being brought out. I'm just going to keep calling it Strike or Slash because I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Reaping Slash. Reaping Slash. I don't know why I said Decimating Strike. I think that's <laughs> It sounds cool. Ability. I think that's what Scion's ability is called. If someone wants to look at that for me. Really. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh. Some miss... Missed abilities there. Meganar the right here gonna have the ignite getting popped right here for Death's design. And it's not gonna result in anything. Now he's down both his summoners. Nar's gonna stay in this lane relatively healthy though. And able to continue scrapping it up. Although Kane's looking around here to break his way through a wall. His opportunity. Here we go. He's gonna come in from behind. They're gonna Rem. have dash away, just get him even lower. Rem is looking bot lane. This could be detrimental for Stora. Detrimental oh. indeed. They're gonna open it up right there, and that's gonna be first blood. Not Ram is with the roll in and the taunt. They see me rolling, they hate it. I like to dead. see a rotate up to top lane so he can get this counter gank because this Urgot is in some trouble. If he gets that Ramus up there, then oh no, he's going back to his blue. Or in getting the scuttle crab, I mean. This top jungle will be taken by the king. A Great uh, counter jungle going out. Some confrontation up there. Ergot looking real low. Being pushed out of lane, this Nar is able to completely control the wave. Kane, what? Whoa, 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 Ergot, so cool, calm down, buddy. The blue being stolen from the Kane uh, with 
Ram is counter jungling. I'd still like to see him go top lane and get that double kill Wait, counter kill. Wait, no, that was Fizzy. That was his. That was his oh, own. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh um, no, it's fine. I it's have to he just took names. it so late. Yeah, I have to switch the names. <laughs> yeah, him taking it so late is kind of off-putting. I will admit. But yeah, now we see Overhaul gonna throw out this hook, gonna come a little bit down south. Doesn't can't seem to replicate that man wall with laser precision. Feels bad, man. Okay, now creeping around the mid lane, looking to see what he can pop off for his team, just walking back and forth in the bush. He's gonna decide to retreat back to his jungle. Still anybody's game, honestly, at this point. It's only Although we do have a slight growing goal lead due to the uh, farms, due to the farm and the kill, right. I still feel like this is anybody's game. This uh, Dux Predator is able to completely shut down Death's design and farm almost every single time in this top lane early game. But he can't sustain it though, can he? Because no, last what? time Urgot ended up taking the farm advantage into the late, later parts of the game. Right. Because. Dex Predator, he seems to, he doesn't seem to know how to, you know, you don't, I have the same problems so while I can, you know, speak from first-hand experience. Oh. Hold up, before we talk about that, let's talk about this hook getting pulled in right here. Manuel's going to take some damage. Yeah, Looking like a okay. fight could have broke out, but he's going to jump to a minion and keep himself alive. But yeah, I have this problem where, like, I'll, I'll be so obsessed with grouping because I get flamed so much for grouping that I don't know how to be like, all right. I don't need to be here. Let me go to this lane, side lane and pick up some farm because I need it. Ramus rolling in again right here. Not going to get anything except a roll into some minions. And that's a good gank attempt from Ramus. Honestly, he needs to just keep trying to gank because Ramus, he's not going to be able to out jungle like the cane or anything. So that's his best right. bet to get his lanes as far ahead as he can. Well, there's ketchup XP. So like, if he keeps on ganking, he should be ganking this top lane because this Gnar is getting real low sometimes. Mm -hmm. And Kane's taking that opportunity to Kane's gank all the time. taking advantage of that coming up top, but... I don't know, because, like, Ramus, Ramus has one of the slower clears right. in League of Legends, versus Kane has no problem just eating through camps, like, they're or burning through them like rubber. So he needs to just kind of accept when you're against a counter jungler like Kane. Granted, this Kane isn't doing counter jungling as hard as he could. Right, right now, Kane could be in the red, but there is no vision on the side of... Astora in in their jungle except for that tri bush, but mm -hmm. that's from the not. There's no wards. Oh, oh, attempting to roam. You learned the hook, gonna miss out. Oh, we're actually seeing Kane going towards the bottom lane when there is no uh, no one bottom. This is a macro misplay, I believe. He he has blue up, which the Ramus could. If he had wards in there, he can take right now. Um, and he should be more focusing on the top side because if Ramus does decide to come top lane, if Kane's not in that area, that's going to be a guaranteed kill for them. Almost guaranteed. Especially with Urgot now having ult. As we can see, the ketchup XP, uh, Fizzy, was also actually behind in level. And he's behind in CS. And is actually a level higher than Fizzy. Uh, I mean, sorry. Here we go, fight gonna break out right here, kind of the exhaust taking Kane, oh solo, Sir Kante Lot's gonna be the first one to go down right here. And now we're gonna see Manuelus might follow suit, he's gonna go low, pay for his team, sends the four man roam with the uh, Tweak, with the Echo, played by Tweak, excuse me, making his way down. I may ask what time are you on? I am at 8.59, 9 minutes. Uh, you're behind a few seconds. Ah, okay, of course. All right, now I'm at 9.13, yep. 14, 15. Okay, we're good now. Some great tower damage here. Pretty good one-for-one -one trade, but then also great uh, rotation. Urgot made his way down from the top lane. The call coming in from the team. And Astor, or excuse me, as you are, Glacial Uprising are able to get the first tower of the game. Oh, something we didn't notice. Uh, the mid tower is gone on the side yeah. of Astora. Yeah, that's this what I'm saying. They just 
glacial uprising they called down for the ergot to roam and they three man pushed it after they saw the uh skirmish in the bottom lane yeah but the, they because you know echo showed his face so they knew four people were down there they still saw not talk so they knew it was a safe call echo gonna get used have to use some cheeky moves right here do his best to stay alive and he should make it out this chase is able to roam oh a disconnect coming he's coming back a pause but this uh jace has pretty good ro roaming potential, especially with his ult giving him movement speed. He's able to extend that lead and bring it down to the bottom lane, which that can control dragon. They get the dragon, that's movement speed, which means even more roaming for them, extending more of the mm -hmm. lead. Gonna end the pause, get back into this game. Nar coming in from behind right here. He looks like he might find himself a nice piece of Lucian action, you know. Black man gets dominated by dinosaur. I think I've seen that on my late night browsing. Oh, oh, I and think I've seen that too. And that's gonna be a kill right there. No. I'm seeing the Brom getting most of the kills in the bottom lane. That's not it's gonna portal help. Portal combat. It's not gonna help too much. No, you're taking tower. Be careful. Sure, can't they lie? You're taunted. You're dead, actually. You're gonna try and get inside Urgot, you know. Oh. That doesn't always work out. He's gonna drag him. What? Oh. He didn't. Phil. Oh! The he snipe! Just oh my god, he gets sniped by Jace, but that was actually really good from, uh, Sure, can't they lie? I don't know if anyone noticed, but he went inside the wall, so he didn't get dragged in by Urgot. The, the he drag. Went was missed anyways. You can shoot the Yeah, he wall. dodged the Urgot ulti with that. Yeah. Real cheeky move. Oh yeah, because he didn't see him with the vision, so he was uh, predicting. You him. have to have vision to pull them in is what it is? No, you have to have vision to aim it properly. Oh yeah. No, but he had it latched onto him, I believe, didn't no, he? No, he missed it. Oh, I'm still trying to learn how the indicators work with that, so thank you for that. Thresh now finds himself all alone in a combat zone. Urgot just diving in, putting so much damage onto him. Echo makes his way in. He gets the return kill, and he might be even be able to pick up a kill on Jace. Glacial Uprising biting off a little bit more than their mouths can chew. Tweak with the double kill and the double buffs. That's going to be big for him. Getting his pockets at 4 0 0, nice and fat. This Echo is going to be fed. This could actually be the turning point where Astora actually has the advantage in this comp. If he's able to completely destroy the squishies, it's not going to matter that they have uh, super tanks because their mm -hmm. ADC Tristana, one of the best tank destroyers uh, to exist in the AD carry role, is able to just completely wreck them when they have no damage to support them. Gnar rolling his way in, rolling like a wagon wheel, going to crash in and, uh, as you were, Ram is rolling his way in, gonna ramp, roll into Nar, and Nar's actually gonna live by the hairs of his shinny chin chin. Gonna just get W to death by the uh, minigun of death's design. So quick trade right back, jungle with the top laner. You can see that uh, farm lead actually normalizing as we're getting near the mid game, as we saw from last game. And we're seeing the same stuff over and over. Astora is getting picked and not using their strengths, the Echo. Mm -hmm. Your Echo's 4-0-0. Oh, no. You need to be utilizing that. What you not, don't need to be doing is letting your Thresh get pulled in and uh, getting grinded up by Death's design like he just did. That's going to be the dragon for side of Glacial. That's going to help their roams. That's going to just completely give them control of this game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tweet going in. And he's going to go in with such a low amount of health, but he's still going to just burst the ever-living mess. So much damage is amazing. Dux Predator now looking to cause some mischief over here at the Dragon Pit. Throwing his boomerang over, but his team just doesn't want any piece of it. Like, look at Kane just not even walking in that direction. Yeah, that's going to be the Dragon for Glacial. They're going to have more control of this game. The only crack in their plans is this Echo. Roaming free. Escaping by... Give me a minute. Rick Harold actually going to Astora. No wards on the side of Glacial. 
that's gonna give them the pushing power to actually be able to bring their towers to a lead for them. Thresh's exhaust coming up real soon, helping them in fights. The farm lead on the side of um, the Glacial is everywhere where you want it, except for in the top lane. Your jungler doesn't matter with farm. Farm doesn't matter for junglers. Your supports don't matter. But the ADC in the mid laner is where it truly shines. And they're having the leads in where it matters. The mobility boots actually picked up by this Braum. Quite an unorthodox pick for a tank that doesn't really have a hook. So he's going to be able to roam faster and be around the map and help who he needs to help. Mike muted. Mm, Mike muted. Mike muted. Kappa. Pause going out, so I can't de lot DC it again. <clears throat> Many mic muted. There we go. I have my apologies. I'm back, and I come back. Uh, who somebody DC'd? Uh, is Sir Cam Daylot again? A bug splat, it looks like. I wonder if this uh, is just crashing or if there is an underlying problem affecting Sir Cam Daylot's uh, performance in this game. Yeah, he might not be feeding the hamsters enough to keep his computer. Right? <laughs> uh, when did you start playing League Shadow? Uh, I started at the end, or in the middle of Season 3, I believe. Around okay. where Lissandra was released. Okay, see. I remember back in Season 2 when I started playing. Lo loading into games actually could be like a 10-15 minute process sometimes. It was oh, actually yeah. mind-blowing. Season 3 was also that a light. I remember I was able to eat a full dinner, cook my dinner, walk my dog. I don't even have a dog, I just walked some guy's dog. And I was able to come back, game was at 10%. And I'm like, okay, yeah. let me go do uh, whatever I need to do, which is... You'd have one guy with a bad computer, and you'd all take forever. Do you know that was who, also back... Do you know who that was, though, for me? That was me. You. It was always me. I had the toaster. I couldn't even run Minecraft on Moment. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was running feels on... bad. <laughs> 10 my FPS. friend was one of those guys, and we would deadass be like, all right, well, if... Be like, all right, good. Be like, all right, um... What was it? Prince. Prince used to have a toaster would have been an upgrade. That man was actually running a potato with like <laughs> a freaking, uh, with like a Game Boy Advance as his display. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I had jokes where I brought potatoes to school and everyone brought their computers and everyone's like, wait, where's your computer? I'm like, oh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, those were some rough times in League of Legends, man. That was also, APE was a thing back then. Oh, APE, I remember my friend. The silver, he's silver now. Back then he was like platinum diamond. APE was his friend. And it was not everyone else's. Oh, those were the days. Back when League of Legends was balanced. With oh APE. gosh, APE. Like, I think about it, right? I don't get, I don't know those, I, I like wanted to be noble back then. I'm like, I won't ever use anything like that because that's so broken and that's not, it's wrong. Dude, you could have, you could have climbed to like platinum off of APE just straight up. <laughs> AP, good old AP. Seeing a team fight brewing soon, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's... definitely brewing with how it's looking right now. We have Nar, he's gonna be recalling, but when he goes back. Never mind, I thought he. I don't know why I thought that said 1600 instead of 600 gold. 
But just looking, speaking of gold, haven't looked at it in a long time. We have, we have thirteen, about thirteen hundred for the Urgot, about thirteen hundred on Ramis, eight hundred on Jace, about five hundred Lucian's pocket, about a thousand on the Brom, and then about seven hundred fifty, seven fifty on the Thresh. Tristana just bought. We have speed in. Team fight, team fight. IP as fuck. Jace gonna get hooked in. This might be the start right here. Gonna have the Thresh box coming down. Ram is gonna get taken. Uh, Ram is gonna get taken real low off of this Buster shot. Or as you were explosive shot. Now Lucian over the wall with the culling. Actually gonna get eaten by the Raptor camp spawning. Bad timing. Two people down and now Thresh weaving his way in and out the fight. Kane playing this so well on the edge of his health bar. Not well enough though because he's gonna go down. And that's gonna be a 2 0. We just saw complete and utter destruction. With only the king going down. Oh! Fight breaking out again right here. And here we're gonna have Nar getting a beautiful ulti. I got so many people on the wall. Getting them so low. Godlike for Tweak with the kill, but he's <sighs> gonna go down. Oh, and now let's no. look right here. Death Design gonna try and pull someone in, grind them up, make some stew, and we're just gonna have a two for two getting traded. That was very sad for them. With the Echo getting away with one HP. That was Echo, good. man. Committing murder right there and getting away with it. Very, very big damage coming out there. If you saw at the start of the fight, it started off with Jace bringing the Echo to half health with just the Q, and then Echo returning it with his abilities his ulti that was a perfect like ulti timing from the echo hold up I have a, I'm curious now so let's say you have the uh, ergot ulti I want to see that so I want to see ergot ult onto a uh, what's that guy's name echo and as like the change traveling to him echo presses his ulti and goes back to like a lot of health uh, no, we'll see what happens. It's a suppress, so it won't happen. Okay. What? If, so what if it's like actually the actual like thing is traveling at him though? You know the chains that pull you in. Um, the, when it's pulling in, it does not work. When you're shooting out the drill, it uh you cannot to dodge it. A cool mechanic oh. that people might not know: if Brom is blocking a teammate while it's pulling in, it will pull the Brom at full health and eat him and completely kill him. It'll eat a full health bomb. That's what I want to know. Like, is it like just set? It's going to kill this person. Oh, yeah. You just. Oh my it. God, that is disgusting. I'll call him American Sniper. <laughs> that is gonna be very sad on the side of Astora. Losing a player list late in the game is not okay, especially with big objectives coming up soon in 20 seconds, 30 seconds on the Baron. And such important ones, like the Inferno TFT Drake. giving a pretty good summary of Ergot Ulti. You either dodge it or you don't. <laughs> There's no in between. Right. Only way you're surviving that is if Ergot dies, and that's kind of hard as a as a tank. Yeah. He does. It's crazy because like Ergot doesn't even look like he should be. He's that tanky, but he just absolutely. <sighs> I think it has to do more with the lore where pain makes him stronger. Which is a little weird, but to each their own. Mm -hmm. This dragon fight starting with uh, one player missing on the side of... Yeah, and they're grabbing Sora. up into this pit right here. Might have something for Fizzy to look for with the ulti. They're not getting pulled into the middle of people, but he's still just going to go into the Tristana. No one's going to do anything, actually. Peeling for on the backside. Everyone's going to get low. She's going to be the first person getting grinded to pieces after the Ramus. A carry down, and now we have Tweak actually going down, so that's both 80 carries. Now Urgot's just chasing on the backside. Overhoe's gonna follow suit. It's two for two still, but. Just hold up, you can't just leave your carry like that, but at the same time, Urgot, you can't go that hard into the team. You're the most fed person on your team. I feel like you should prioritize peeling for your carry. Right. And getting caught out. I think at this moment that the Lucian isn't the carry. I think. The carry Urgot really is up. the Urgot. He, he's the A to C and the top lane tank. Heard it here first, folks. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the Kata now. <laughs> Definitely, if this continues... Speeding in right here, going to use Skirmisher Say. We're going to catch this cane on some counter jungling. Going to get him a decent amount of health. 
Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Is what uh, Ramus asked him. Oh, Urgot, come in from the side. One thing I do I do want to take note of, he uses a lot of mana. Right. Because now look at him, he finds himself with not enough mana for any fight. And he's going to have to auto it out, busy picking up the kill on Sir Camp a lot. And Urgot getting hooked in, but now he has a team of posses to back him up. Shock Blast not going to hit anything. And they should be able to just disengage any sort of mischief. If you notice where all the kills are going, it's always going to one person. If you take out the Urgot, you win the team fight, I believe. If you take out the Echo, you also win the team fight. Yeah. And or if you again, flash all, if you flash taunt onto the Overho, you win the team fight. Oh, that works no. too. That's not good when Baron's up. You need that thresh. Yeah. Why aren't they starting Baron? You have two man. You have two person advantage on the map. Start Baron. Fuck Scuttlecrab. Go attack Baron. Attack Baron. Urgot just stand. Just kill Tristana, and then just give them these staggered death. No, you don't have to turn and fight. Just take Baron. They're <laughs> gonna go for Tristana right here. She's gonna flash over the wall. Now Echo's gonna have an opportunity to get a pick, unless he's gonna get deleted and alt back right into an Urgot who's actually gonna take him oh so low. Gonna fire out the ulti. Not gonna land. Is Kane going into a losing fight? Yeah, Kane's gonna go right here onto this Urgot, hoping the numbers advantage might be able to work for him. But no, Urgot's gonna have the stairs gauge pop, and he's gonna get a lot of health and get really big and tanky. That's designed to get the kill onto Tweak. Now we're gonna have the Gnarls and three people into the wall, into terrain. Might be able to turn this around a little bit for his team. Looking for something. Man Rolls, before he can pop the plant, he's gonna get away actually safely. And now Sir Camp A lot needs to kite his way out of this. Gonna get hit by the Ramus. Fizzy gonna go down to Thresh. That whole fight, Urgot was missing. They were missing their carry. They're just crumbling. What's happening? Lucian flashing in right here, not giving any Fs. Steel gonna get exhausted up and probably gonna die. And they just what? Are, okay, so pause. They had a three v five on the map, and they didn't take Baron. One right. of them being the enemy jungler of the two people, and they didn't take Baron. That's not the play right there, lazy and down. We're seeing some communication breakdown from Glacial. They're missing their Urgot in a team fight that they need him and then they don't take the Baron. They might be falling under the stress. We don't know what's going on with them. But they need to fix whatever's going on so that if they want uh, to win this game. Because this Echo is going out of control. So we find ourselves here at 24 minutes. Very different state of the game than the last one. This game's still seeing almost dead even. Less than a thousand gold separating these two teams. Three to three. They both have their one superstar. Urgot for the uh, side of Glacial Uprising. And Echo for the side of Astora. Echo does a lot more damage, particularly to one person he can burst. However, Urgot's just so tanky and a sentinel in these team fights. And we might have a team fight here as Fizzy rolls forward, not gonna catch anybody. Oh, so close. Oh, the poke just completely decimating that Trasana. If this Trasana's not able to heal up, this is gonna be huge. Mm -hmm. Actually, Trasana not having a second item. Gonna get the hook on an Urgot. That's not the person you want to be pulling in. Just because Urgot comes from the sea doesn't mean you want to land a hook on him. <laughs> Great analogy. Good old crab humor. I actually think if they just group up and fight Astora and not even pay mind to that Tristana, because she doesn't even have an IE yet. Her, oh, mm -hmm. she might be going back now and getting that IE. They missed their opportunity. But they could also take the fight now while they're missing um, their ADC. Not again coming up short with the taunt distance. Oh, just completely leaving. Team fight right start. here. Gonna have Jace getting caught out by himself. This is not the play, Shay. We're seeing the roles reversed here. I. This just brings the gold to an even closer. Closer. What is this? 300 gold? 300 gold. And now Blue Team with some swagger in their steps. Gonna look for a fight. A hook from downtown. Man, Walrus getting pulled in. And he might be the first of many to fall for his team. 35 ma advantage on the map. What does the blue team do right here? They want, they look like they want to get a tower, but their heart tells them, go back and get this Baron. You have an Urgot that's still really strong, but with the numbers advantage and your Echo, you should be able to take this. 
Sir can't they lot. You don't need to be killing that. You need to be going over. Go pick this up. Gonna get pulled over the wall. And he looks like. Looks like they're gonna start this. Keep it going. Ramus rolling in. It's gonna be a 50 50 smite unless they can kill him before it starts. Or if Ramus oh. can get in the middle, taunt a lot of people up. And now we're gonna have a 4v5 breaking out, but the health bars are solo from the side of Blue Team. They look like they made the wrong decision to turn up in this fight. They're retreating with their tails between their legs. Tristana sitting on the lowest sliver of health. Gonna bust her shot and do everything she can to get away. Rocket jump. In oh. That... Oh my god, triple kill. That Ram is really winning the fight there with his ultimate hitting all the all the people from Astora. Yeah, like so Astora right there. No yeah, no all chat guys. No all chat unless it's GG or uh good luck, have fun. I but, have chat turned off so no one will see it. Okay. It was just something between the teams going on. Busy, you are the person that needs to be at the Baron, because if you go down Okay, you're gonna they're gonna delete Sir Camp a lot. Like it's nothing, but Busy's definitely gonna get deleted Ooh. and now tweet, wait, keep going. Go! No, what? Why are you trying to take on the Urg guy? Urgot yeah. is going to win in extended fights every time. You aren't out DPSing an Urgot, my friend. The Urgot is actually low on mana. He might actually be able to win this with the Thresh. With the Thresh, yeah, but one on one, I don't think that was I think he should have went into the pit and just stopped all those bats. <laughs> Tristana down jumping in with the uh, E. She's gonna get on the Lucian. Now she's gonna get the reset jump over the wall. Actually, not even gonna use it. Gonna flash. Now she's gonna get on top of Urgot and to go down because she gets a little too over eager McBeaver. And now Thresh is gonna flash after, and all the Barons are gone. This is a classic. Oh, wait, no, wrong team, my bad. And a clown fiesta. Fiesta. Nueva. The dragon coming up. Uh, being more on the side for Glacial to take this with the wards all around. Do we even see a ward on the side of Astora except for that one at red? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. We have the two control wards for Thresh, but I actually... You, you can check ward score. 27 for the Gnar. Or vision score, my bad. 18 for the Kane. 19 for the Echo. 14 for the Trish. 43. Versus on the other side. 24, 24, 23, 11, 45. So we have... Yeah, we do have slightly higher vision scores. I, if someone could do the average math on that, on those numbers, I know I said them really quickly. DC again from Sir Camp A lot. It's really the vision that's bringing a lot. We notice something. What do we notice? Glacial's pick. been really good with pick comps. Why? Pick, pick, pick. Because they're able to see Astora. Why? Because all their wards. If Astora brings out their wards, they're able to stop the picks and maybe get picks for themselves. We can see in the more in the mid game they were able to pick off um, Glacial when they were in the lanes. If Glacial brings the fights to the jungle like they did at Baron, Astora doesn't have vision and they're able to completely have it in their territory. So right now Glacial wants to be in the jungle and Astora wants to be in lane. Look out, Shea Vizla right here. Oh my god, Tweet jumping all the way back. And now here in the red team's southern jungle quadrant, we might have a team team fight breaking out. They're doing the best to keep Tristan alive. Eels are all on the bottom side. She's actually going to hop across the fight. Not really sure what she's doing right there. Getting the three-man Gnar ult. going to smash him into the wall. Rocks, rocks everywhere. Jace just staying alive over here. Two people already down, the carry and the Gnar. This fight is going to fall apart. We're actually going to see Astora get aced. That's the jungle fight. You're in the wrong territory for these fights. Yeah, because Jace can get a shot blast on everybody since the corridor is so thin. Lucian can get the culling across so many people. The, uh, what's it called? Urgot with his W. Like, all of them, all the pe all these people actually really benefit from fighting in that tight corridor that they decided to fight in. The Brahma and they being so are going to lose a lot of their base off of this. And just, they're gonna we, just pick up an inhib. We just need to see a store of fight in the right place, and at the mm. right time, and know the right things. They can bring right this place, game back. Right they can. They definitely can, because Tristana outscales Lucian 
in every way possible. However, she's an item behind Lucian. Right. But this Tristana Tristana has a nice two item power spike with IE and static shiv. What the f French toast. <laughs> oh man. Now if we look at the items here, we got pretty good item lead on the side of Glacial almost all around. We see What are those sound effects? Is that like grunting from one of the Oh, that's Tristan's little dragon. Oh my god. The item lead against Nar against uh, Urgot is insane. You reverse the top laner she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> like, actually, look at this. Nar has his core items, I guess you could say. His random ones and his black cleaver. But Urgot has gone above and beyond. He has the black cleaver, the thorn mail, the adaptive helm, I think that is. Which I'm not really a fan of that item. It's good against the... Here we go, gonna have him flashing forward. Fizzy gonna get this pick on, or try to get it onto Duck's Predator. He's gonna get way, way too low because he's taking up so much tower as well as damage. And he's only the first person to fall, going a little bit too hard, biting off a little bit more than he can chew with that uh, dive. And now blue team has the numbers advantage. Red team might not be able to press this. Not gonna go forward, get the stun onto Urgot. Hook gonna go wide right. Sir Campton like in the two-man knockup. Onto the carry and his uh, support. So can't they like getting another Ooh. knock up, but his team's not there. What is he doing? They're gonna have Urgot getting hooked in, pulled back, and have the W gonna flip the Thresh into the fight, dominating for Death Design, and he's just a sentinel standing a god amongst men with how high health he is. Actually gonna get collapsed. David and Goliath right there. Sir Canterlock gonna take him out, gonna quickly fall. Shea Bizzle now godlike, he's taking up the spot. What's the king to a god as he's gonna just dance back and forth with about half health, trying to put as much damage down as he can and keep this going. You can see how more balanced these fights are when they're playing in the yeah. lane. If Tristana was not in the first fight, so everyone was low, if she was in that first fight, this could have turned out a lot different with Astora having the complete advantage in these fights. Lucian yeah. looking really dangerous right here. Could be collapsed on, on this Echo. And she's sitting on about 1600 gold. Thinks she's gonna pick up a Phantom Dancer or a Rapid Fire Cannon with her next item. And she actually will. I actually think that's where she'll start to out DPS Lucian once she gets the second attack speed item. Like, even though he'll be an item ahead of her. Yeah, the, the Bork isn't that useful. It's. After it's yeah. nerfed, it is pretty bad for its money. Kane running forward, looking for something right here. Gonna walk through the walls. Now he's going to open up, get the three-man knock-up, and the Thresh is going to land the hook. The box is going to come down, exhaust on Lucian. Kane's going to get all up inside Lucian's guts. Get the kill right there. Sir Canterlot going to get the first one. Tristana going to pound away, get a, more kills for her team. That's three people. Urgot flashing in, going to use the chains and drag Tristana to her death. Now he's going to see what he can do in this 1v3 scenario. He's so tanky, going to have his stairs gauge get popped. And he might actually be able to put in some work right here. They're going to drag and toss and turn him around. But he still has a lot of damage. Gonna throw someone around. Echo weaving his way in and out with his health bar. The hook's gonna come around, and I may have spoken too soon. His death sign, you are a dead man. Oh, Ray Boss down, but here Ram comes the second one. There he is. They're gonna try this one at a time, int it up. This guy's a little more tanky. Gonna pop the mastery emote on his way out. out. And just leave it out. Walk away, be gentlemen. Seventeen, four, and twelve on that Urgot. He's r being a real carry here. Problem is, Urgot has one more item slot, and then after that, he needs to stop taking kills. And he right. needs to let his team. He needs to let his jungler get some gold, or he needs to let that Thresh get some gold, or something. Cause yeah, he. Please build a. Please be building a gunblade. I'd rather see you a gunblade than a Bork on you. Right. I, I feel this Urgot needs to start giving the kills now because right now you saw he was able to one v three for that long. If he has a DPS or another person, there's nothing they can do. Um, yeah. The store in the terms of team fight, unless they play it perfectly. TP being used. Not doing much with it.
dragon coming up and this baron is also live. Mm -hmm. Does does dragon trainer Tristana have any special quotes when she attacks? I feel like she has. She says something corny when she autos dragon. She has to. It has to. It's a legendary skin. If they don't do that, then that's failed part on Riot. I mean, Magnificent Twisted Fate was once a legendary skin, to be fair. Was. Which, in the past, we're talking Pulse Fire Ezreal old style. Hey, Pulse Fire Ezreal was a skin that was, you know, a thing was amazing when it first came out. What might be more amazing than switching to Geico, or what I was talking about, is this fight that's getting broken out right here. Tristana on the backside, staying real low. Nar going a little bit too deep is going to go down, and this is already a 3v5, not looking the greatest. Tristana just doing her best, doesn't even want this, but it doesn't. She needs to do something, but to, but not to stay back. She tries to hop back into Ramus. Ramus is going to get killed, this is just going to be a clean ace. This is going to be the game. This is going to be a 2-0. This is going to be a 2-0. Glacial is going to be your number one in this this week. The numero uno, the TSM OGN icons being brought out. GG is going I said OGN. I meant to say world. I don't know why I said TSM OGN. <laughs> I think it's, that used to be a, that actually used to be an emote. I remember that. I think I I remember that too. Not too familiar with it. That's gonna be the victory. GG takes about ten minutes longer, but Glacial Uprising in a pretty good series. Urgot the Crab Master being the main man in both games. Gonna take it 2-0 on the night. Final kill score 20 30 as you were, 37 to 27. Goal differential 69.4 to 59.5, 8 to 3 in terms of towers. Two Infernal Dragons, something we didn't actually talk too much about, but those Infernal Dragons had to have played, played a big part in helping them with damage. Uh, yeah, we, we can... I don't think there's a doubt in anybody's mind who was the MVP that game. Mm -hmm. That game was straight death's design. There's a lot of memes about him, but he's a greater god. <laughs> He is one of the best Urgots I've seen in this league. Have we seen any Urgots in this league before? I've seen two others. <laughs> oh yeah, let me scroll down to stats and give it a look real quick. Alright, so based off of uh, the two MVPs, we had Man uh, not Man Walrus. We had, yes, we it was Man Walrus. We had Man Walrus as Thresh and... Death's design as Urgot, the two MVPs of whoa, whoa, those whoa, games. Whoa, 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 who just invaded my domain? Manwarlus wanted to do a little interview because he hasn't done this one since the beginning. Well, was that council abusing their power and just dragging people in as they feel? We have yeah, a cast. I dragged myself in. I'm. Uh... Hold up. Wait a I minute. Cancel for a bit. I give cancel. We have. We have a. <laughs> I can get away from these plebeians. All right. So we have the two MVPs here. We'll have them talk it out, and then we will finally decide who is the MVP of the series. Maybe I say we I just know. have a rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. scissors. How do you do that when you can't like physically see each other? Exactly. There's so, so many we'll rock, paper, scissors games on the internet, dude. Like, actually. <laughs> we'll find out a way through the way they speak here. We'll find out. Oh, should I need to unmute this? Right, click him. All right, nice. Manny or Steel, if you wish okay. to ask some questions, here's your chance. All right. So my first question is to uh, Man Walrus. All right. I want to know how was Navy Seal sniper training because some of those hooks in that first game, like. What? Uh, well, I mean, what? I don't know. I just kind of close my eyes and throw them because I'm a really bad Braum one trick, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, when you when you when you really, you just kind of have to throw. You just you just gotta close your eyes, just <laughs> just throw them wherever, and count on the enemy team to have sub ADC, I guess. All right. <laughs> It took, it took us a couple times to, 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 to get the pattern of dodging <laughs> so all over the place. You know, some people at the uh, higher elo, well, at this elo, uh, where Overjoy is, it's it's like you, you dodge down a lot of times, so if you don't dodge down, you just stay still. But he just went all over the place and it was hard. It's Yeah, it, it's kind of good from him, from Overjoy, from doing that. My next question is for Death's Design. Um, 
So how did your team feel about you bringing the Urgot in? I know you've played it before, but how did they feel about you bringing it into this, this series? Was there some resistance or were they supportive of your decision? Uh, my team doesn't really care what I play. <laughs> they don't even care if I feed. They just play. Every They're like, oh, whatever, do whatever he wants. He's he's stupid. Whatever. <laughs> we'll handle ourselves. <laughs> well, you definitely weren't a hindrance this game. Almost 100% win rate. Almost lost one game. <laughs> Sadly. All right. Let's uh, while the next question's going, let's see if we can get some questions in the chat. And we'll pick the best one to ask mm -hmm. whoever you choose in the chat. Yeah. Lucian is bot lane booty rip. What does that mean? What? Lucian is bot lane booty rip. <laughs> is, I think he meant. I think he's saying Lucian like in the bottom lane is not the best right now. Yeah, no, yeah. I actually want to. I actually want to. Yes. Someone's. I want to talk about this. We've been seeing Lucian get played more and more in the mid lane, and you know he's able to just bully so many of these mages and just spam spells relentlessly and force them out. Namely, Orianna, who most people kind of see as like, you know, the queen of mid lane. Lucian has no problem manhandling her through those early levels. Mm -hmm. And we just haven't seen him bot in so long. Well, I mean, first of all, there's like just maybe two supports that go well with Lucian right now, bot lane, and that's Braum and Lulu, I feel like. So if you're, you're gonna play another support, I don't think it's gonna fit really well. And Lucian just, it's my main. People used to ban it a lot in season one, and now they just stop because Lucian kind of sucks now. But but I mean it's just a comfort pick, and I always feel comfortable playing any matchup. Okay. Okay. All right. Understandable. Fair enough. I was gonna pick it first game too, but then he picked it. But I wanted to play Callista. <laughs> so do you guys not like Ergot? Because, uh, like, like it. it sounds like he's a weird champion the way I hear everyone talk about him, but he's so solid in my opinion. I don't, okay, so here's my thing. I don't think, I don't think there's anything, oh, gosh, how do I word this? I don't even know how I want to word, like, the idea is <laughs> somewhere in my mind. Someone else see if they can give their opinion before I get mine, so until I can get it together. Forgot his trash, TFT caster. He, he has a, a bad name to him from before, so everyone's not really forgotten that. I mean, what do you what do you think his opinion's gonna be on anything? Have you have you heard him compliment like like anybody, ever? Ugh, <laughs> some shade thrown around here. Um... So who's the who's the shot caller of your team? Who who decides uh, your God. team comps that, and that's that's everybody. Yeah, that's we everybody. <laughs> everybody's a shot caller. I, I don't yeah, I don't think we like play enough to be like, okay, when like a big something big happens, you're the one that has the last word. We just Yeah. We just all respond accordingly to yeah. what we think is appropriate, then we all agree on the decision together. That's for of team course. comp also? Pretty much. Alright, oh my. That's good, baby. All right, all right. So Manny, um, do you have your idea of the MB MVP of the series? I'm gonna have to give it to the. I'm gonna have to give it to the Urgod. I will also have to give it to the first game performance was also very solid. Um, first game was a really great display of you know. First game he did have a rough time in lane, but he was able to come back and impact the game in a pretty decent way. And then in the second game, you just popped off. What do you and guys think something of that, uh, First Invade? That the... was Fizz's call, by the way. First Invade The was... one that was like, you guys were like so close to having a team fight, that one. Well, yeah, I mean, that was... like at the rates. You guys were like, if they, would, if they had, it was like a <laughs> 10 second difference in you guys walking in that bush, I would've... Oh yeah, no, but after that, the first game, Fizzy decided to invade with Kane. The rates. Oh god. Oh no. Jeez, <laughs> that was... Oh. But yeah, the, the last game... We sat in that bush and we're like, they're gonna come, they're gonna come, and then we just left. That was so sad. And then we saw a word. We're like, Fuck. All right, so we got our MVP of the series. That's too good. Death design. A lot of memes towards him, but you, you other teams, watch out. You're versing one of the best ergots in the top lane. M M A. In all of Prophecy Cup NA. Glacier Prophecy Rising Cup NA. Wait, 
Did this guy just leak about the Prophecy Cup South African circuit? Jeez. I, I better keep my mouth closed for next time. Zulu and Sosa gaming. <laughs> but we'll see uh, Glacial Rising rising to the top. Let's see if they can stay there. They I really mean, are the comeback masters. It really, really depends on who you ask, because everyone kind of still seems to like think we're the worst team. So. Feels well, bad, we'll man. see wait if uh, they'll, wait they'll for us to lose stop talking after after we after this week. We will I mean, see. we play Yeet Street, so that's really going to decide it, I suppose. All right, that will be a hype game when we see all of that. All right, all right. I think this. Uh... He said that he's going to quit if we lose one game to Yeet Street. <laughs> all right, everyone, you heard it here. Quote me. Yeet Street. Clip that shit. Yeet Clip Street. If you general. beat Fizzy, it's all over. One game, he's going to retire. It's your chance to get him out of Prophecy Cup. <laughs> Just... <laughs> this is your chance, everybody. All right. Is there any last questions from you, Manny? Um, unless anyone here is a certified medical doctor, no. I certified. would like that right now, too. Practicing. I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying inside. I'm playing with these monkeys. <laughs> Alright, All right. guessing, guys. Alright, yeah, definitely. Uh... This VOD is gonna go to YouTube after this. Make sure make sure you send it over there, Shadow. The templates are pasted into the uh, group the group message. Okay, so um, this has been Shadow and uh, Manny as your casters with the teams Astora and Glacial Uprising. Mm -hmm. Have a good night, everybody. Any good final night, words everybody. from you, Manny? Uh, any nothing besides the standard. Just go, you know, check out my social media if you ever want to follow me or see what I do with my day. All right, all right. Good night, everybody. Good night.